Hi everyone and welcome to Lean Finance. My name is Sven and this channel is about finance, investing and money. The goal is to share knowledge with my experience with you and to show you that personal finances don't need to be complicated. In this video I will present you my Excel template, which I use to monitor my monthly saving rate. So let's go with this new video. How does my Excel template look like? Let's immediately jump into Excel and I will give you a short overview of the structure and usage of the file. So here we are with my Excel template, where I track all my income and expenses. Let's first talk a little bit about the structure before we go into the concrete usage of the file. The complete area here is formatted as a table with different columns. The first three columns show some general information like the month and the end of each week. There's also a comment column, which I don't use at the moment, but you could drop some comments here for each week if you want to. Next to these first three lines, I then have the income section, which contains four columns in total. I track my income in three different categories, salary, dividends, and other income. All my income regarding my job, goes into salary, whereas cash outflows for my investments are tracked under dividends. All incomes which are not related to these two categories go then to other income. That can be for example cash I receive from gifts or money I get back from a tax declaration. Next to that then in column G, I calculate the total of each line. So it's a really just an easy formula adding up all the values of the three columns before with a sum. So now after the income, let's have a look at the expenses. I will move the file here a little bit to the right because we have here some more columns. In general, I have a lot more categories for expenses than for income because I really want to group my expenses by different natures so I'm able to scan my spending habits and see where I spend most of my money. In the first category, for example, housing, I collect all costs regarding our apartment containing rent and internet costs. All groceries and sanitary products go to household in the next column. Sports as a category should be self-explaining and as one of my biggest hobbies it is usually quite significant compared to the average. Next to it, in food external, I track all food and drink related expenses which are not groceries. So this can be for example restaurant visits, food deliveries or also drinks at the bar. For YouTube I have my own category to track the investments I made into this channel to have here a clear picture on the expenses I have. On the activities hobby, I track all my free time activities, like for example a cinema visit or also other expenses for new books or other hobby related things. Um, due to the COVID-19 situation, these costs are also quite low at the moment. All expenses regarding mobility, like train tickets or car rentals, are grouped in the mobility category. In the next column, I put all our furniture and other stuff we buy for our apartment. The category bank insurance should be also self-explaining, I think. Subscriptions are all my recurring costs, like for example Spotify, Netflix, or the mobile contract for my phone. All electronic devices are tracked in the next column, which are usually quite rare, but recently I needed to buy, for example, a new phone and a laptop, so the expenses here are at the moment quite significant for the year 2021. At the end then I have the categories clothes, gifts and other expenses. Below other expenses I collect everything again which cannot be linked to one of the categories before. So it's the same I do also in the income part. In the total column here in the end, I again just use a formula to sum up all the different amounts of my expenses before. So I really calculate here the total expenses for each of the lines I have in this table. Now that we went through all the columns, let's also have a look at the lines. So I'm going back to the beginning. And we can see here that I usually have four lines for each month. The date in column B usually represents the Sunday of each week. But most of the months don't have exactly 28 days. So I usually add the additional days which I have at the beginning or at the end of the month, to the first or to the last week, to always stick to my four lines per month. 
In the different cells then, I track all my expenses and income by simply entering them each week in the table. When I have multiple expenses for one category, then I usually use a formula to add them up. So for example, when I'm here in household and I would have two expenses for this week, I would just put a formula saying, for example, I bought groceries for 40 euros and 30 euros to then track this here with 70 euros. Of course, I could also put it directly with the total amount. Let's say here for sports, I would have in this week expenses of 30 euros and 60 euros for sports. So I can put directly here 90. This would of course also work. So this is at the end already it, um, how I track all my income and expenses. When you have your template created, what you just need to do now is to fill this template on a regular basis with all your income and expenses to really document all the numbers regarding your financial activities. Some of you may have already noticed that there are also some group rows here at the top. Let's open this part here and have a look here. What I do here is I do some calculations and create two diagrams to visualize my finances. In the first block here on the left, what I do is to calculate my saving rate for each single month. With the sum if formula here in column D, I add up all the amounts of my total income column in the table below. So here, for example, I just do this for January, adding up all my income totals of the months of January. The same I also do then for the expenses with the exact same formula, just now for the total expense column in the table below. Then by definition, the saving rate is my total income minus my total expenses. So here in column F, I just have my total income minus my total expenses to then calculate my saving rate for each month. Then next to it, I have a pie chart where I visualize all my expenses of the year to really see how much I spend in each category. Based on the pie chart, then I can get a first indication of my spending habits and can see in which areas I spend most of the money. Looking at the pie chart right now, you can see housing and household are adding up to nearly 60% which is also an effect of the current COVID-19 lockdown here in Germany, so they don't spend so much money on other stuff. As a basis for the chart, moving this a little bit to the left, you can see here that I do different calculations um, to always calculate the total expenses for each category. So the formula behind is just a simple sum, really calculating or adding up all the total expenses for this category. Same here, for example, for household, or then also for sports, always calculating the total expenses. Let's move this here back and have a look at the second chart here on the right. So what I do here is I show my personal progress with my savings for each month. So it's based on the calculation really on the left where I calculate my monthly saving rate. And here I just try to visualize my monthly progress and how then my savings sum up over the year. So I can always see on one view how much I already saved each month and also how much I saved for the total of the year. So this diagram here is a big motivation factor for me because it really shows your progress in your investing and saving strategy. And that's at the end already it in my Excel file here. So I track all my expenses and income in the table below and then calculate my monthly saving rate at the top and visualizing again some of the data in these two diagrams just to make everything a little bit more nice for me myself to see it and also to motivate myself to see my progress. There are several templates and Excel files out there to track your income and expenses. Find one which you like and just adapt it to your needs. I hope this video helps you to give you an idea how the whole process of monitoring your saving rate can look like in reality. We are at the end of this video. And I'm looking forward to get your feedback in the comments below. See you soon and have an amazing day.